Hi, it's Katrina. From an island full of monkeys in the United States to African hippos taking over entire towns in South America, here are 10 animals found in very strange places. Number 10. Hanging Snakes, Mexico there is a particular cave system in Mexico that is proof that animals are highly adaptable creatures. The Jose Maria Morelos Cave near Cantemo in the Yucatan Peninsula is home to a horde of yellow-red rat snakes that have adapted to a world of complete darkness to make the porous limestone rock cave their home. Usually, these snakes hunt small animals in the forest on the ground, but the reason for the habitat change seems to be the convenience of the menu, as the cave is also home to hundreds of bats. What could be better than snapping up a snack mid-air without having to leave your bed or overexert yourself? It's easy, it's convenient, and in nature, that is hard to find. The geological makeup of the cave walls enables these shrewd reptiles to hide and live in the countless holes in the ceiling and walls. There are six different species of bats known to inhabit the cave. When the bats start making their nightly journey in and out of the cave, the snakes emerge from their hidey holes and dangle from the ceiling, striking at the unsuspecting bats and catching their meals mid-air. Could this perhaps be the definition of an Animal Kingdom drive through Fun fact, another cave in Puerto Rico also has boas that are known to grab bats out of the air. Number 9. Rock Climbing Fish, Hawaii In Hawaii, you'll find a species of fish commonly known as the Nopili Rock Climbing Gobi, Oopu Nopili, or Stimson's Gobi. Tongue twister, anyone? Which basically means the fish that climbs waterfalls. These versatile little critters are an evolutionary wonder. While most of these fishies live on volcanic islands, they are in a constant battle of survival against Mother Nature. When Big Mama has a temper tantrum and turns these tranquil streams into hurricanes, lava flows, and flash floods, the inhabitants either have to bunker down and enjoy the ride, and possibly death, or make a plan for survival. Our fish that climbs waterfalls possesses an abdominal sucker, thank you evolution, that enables them to perform an aerobic move called power burst climbing. Essentially, this means they attach themselves to the slick walls behind the waterfall with their sucker, swiftly sway their tails, and execute a wobbling action which propels them slowly up the wall to a tranquil and relaxing home base. This is no mean feat, as these fish can apparently climb vertical walls that are approximately 100 meters tall. It is also a superb multitasker and uses its sucker to scrape its meals off the rock surfaces appetizing items like algae, which go along with its climbing movements. Scientists wonder if this little sucker's mouth first evolved for eating or for climbing. There are several studies going on to figure out which came first, because this chicken or egg conundrum could give new insight into this strange species of scaly rock climbers. Number 8. Monkey Island, South Carolina have you ever heard about Monkey Island? The island in question is located in Beaufort County, South Carolina, and is situated between the Morgan and Coosa Rivers. The island is known as Morgan Island to the natives and is currently home to one of only two rhesus monkey colonies in the United States. Approximately 3,500 of these free-roaming primates rule the roost here. The colony is situated on 370 acres of this otherwise uninhabited piece of land and is set up as a semi-tropical maritime forest which is fed by automated systems. The monkeys originated from La Parguera in Puerto Rico but were moved to Morgan Island in 1979 as there were various unfortunate incidents of escaped rhesus monkeys carrying the herpes B virus. The South Carolina Department of Natural Resources owns the island where the colony is located and tries to create a natural outdoor laboratory where they would like to educate people and establish a state-of-the-art research facility. Although no visitors of the humankind are allowed on the island itself, especially if you're not a scientist, you can view these fascinating creatures while participating in relaxing activities like boating, fishing, or kayaking nearby. You might even catch a glimpse of them sunbathing in the treetops, running on the beaches, or just monkeying around in the marshes. And now for number 7. But first, if you are new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Number 7. Baikal Seals, Russia Would you ever think to find seals in a lake? 
Lake Baikal in Siberia, Russia is home to the only exclusive freshwater seal species, the aptly named Baikal seals. The only other freshwater seals in the world are the Saima ringed seals from Lake Saima in Finland and the Ladoga ringed seals found in, guess what, Lake Ladoga, northwestern Russia. Notice they are all named after the lakes where they live. Fun fact, Lake Baikal holds the record for the world's largest lake at 636 kilometers wide, and it is more than 1,524 meters deep. And it's said to be the oldest lake dating back to 30 million years ago. But back to the seals. Baikal seals are small creatures that feed off tiny fish in the lake. They weigh around 68 kilograms each and are just 1.2 meters long. They behave pretty much the same way as seals in the sea, chasing fish and sunning themselves on the rocks. The question is, how did the seals come to be there in the first place? Although not yet a proven fact, zoologists suspect these seals came to live in the lake while it was still connected to the Arctic Ocean. Currently, it is hundreds of miles from any ocean. Since the lake is about 30 million years old, some ancestor must have settled down there in one form or another, but exactly how long the seals have been there is still a mystery. During winter when the lake freezes, these seals use their claws and teeth to dig breathing holes. The brown bear is believed to be the only natural predator of the Baikal seals, but these seals are hard to catch. However, seal pups can get carried away by eagles and foxes. Unfortunately, the seals are in danger, as are most other species in the area, from this seemingly unstoppable onslaught of global warming. Number 6. Bunny Island, Japan Okunoshima is a small island in the inland sea of Japan and is often referred to as Rabbit Island or Bunny Island as I like to call it, and you can imagine why. This island is completely overrun by rabbits. After World War II, the island was developed as a recreational park, but during the war, the place was so secret it was erased from all Japanese maps. The rabbits that can be found there today are said to be either descendants from their ancestors that were introduced for experimentation or were released there by some schoolchildren. Either way, these bunnies are all tame and not afraid of human contact. They have changed their schedule so they are most active when there are plenty of tourists with snacks visiting the island, as they are dependent on these visitors for their next meal. This, unfortunately, has led to an unsustainable population boom, and the ecosystem is severely damaged. Hunting the rabbits is prohibited, and therefore a ban has been placed on allowing any dogs or cats access to the island. Okunoshima has become even more popular since the release of a 2014 video showing a rabbit stampede and a woman being overrun by the feral European bunnies. Now all these viral videos are actually hurting the rabbits because, like I mentioned, this unsustainable population boom is hurting the rabbits that everyone around the world has come to love. Number 5. Peacock Island, Germany Fauen Ninsel, also known as Peacock Island, is situated in southwestern Berlin in the River Havel. It is believed that the island lay forgotten for a hundred years until the Prussian king, Friedrich William II, acquired Peacock Island in 1793 and built the castle for his lover. The majestic island is of breathtaking beauty and visitors are now welcome to explore the area at their leisure. Although the island is already unique, peacocks used to be bred on the islands so they couldn't escape and they create an even more magical atmosphere. Besides the one in Berlin, there are still numerous other peacock islands around the world. When visiting the island during spring, you can get captivated by the free-roaming peacocks and luscious rose gardens. Today, the island still holds its intended charming character as a natural wonderland. Apart from the free-roaming peacocks, you will also be able to see many native and exotic birds, and it has been declared a nature reserve by the EU. The island was also declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1990 and can only be reached by taking a small ferry. It consists of mostly woodlands, with some open areas for breathtaking picnic sites. The perfect setting for a romantic day out. Number 4. Goats of Sister Bay, Wisconsin Sister Bay is located in Door County, Wisconsin and is known for its beautiful marina, breathtaking shoreline, friendly lodging establishments, and restaurants for everybody. It's a year-round vacation destination with loads of festivals and activities throughout each season. One of the most famous restaurants in Sister Bay is surely Al Johnson's Swedish Restaurant. Not only is this establishment known for its hospitality, excellent food and drinks, but also for goats on the roof. Wait, what? Yep, that's right. These famous goats on the roof come down every evening and are brought back to climb the stairs leading to the roof every morning. These intriguing creatures even have a yearly festival dedicated to them called the Roofing of the Goats, 
with the annual Goat Parade, followed by games, activities, food, and drinks at the Al Johnson's Goat Festival. Oh, and don't forget the titular Goat Roofing. The sure-footed goats can be found grazing the moss covering the roof of Al Johnson's every day, from late May to October when the weather is warmer. This unique site has made this establishment quite famous. If you want to partake in this silly, albeit interesting festival, June is the perfect time to travel there. Number 3. Parrots of Telegraph Hill, California Telegraph Hill, San Francisco is home to a flock of beautiful, colorful, wild parrots. Researchers believe that an escaped pair of cherry-headed conures found their ecological niche on Telegraph Hill in 1990. These SKPs were quickly joined by other jailbreakers or possibly released conures from the city, and soon the population of wild parrots has grown to a gigantic flock. Coming down Telegraph Hill is the famous Filbert Steps, and residents on both sides of the stairs have the most beautiful, lush gardens, which, along with the wild parrots flying overhead, gives you a fantastic urban jungle vibe. The steps can be reached from the top or the bottom, but be warned that they are very steep, and you will have to be game for a bit of a workout if you're thinking of tackling them. The Wild Parrots of Telegraph Hill was also produced as a documentary film, released in 2003. It tells the story of an unemployed musician, Mark Bittner, who lives rent-free in a cabin in Telegraph Hill, and the flock of feral parrots that he interacts with and feeds. The documentary was later also published as a book and mostly focuses on the individual parrots and the way that they interact with each other. An excellent read for bird lovers. Number 2. Feral Pigs Bahamas Major Cay, or Pig Island, is an uninhabited island located in the Bahamas. This island received the name Pig Island, and some even call it Pig Beach because of the colony of feral pigs that have made their home here. Legend has it that a bunch of sailors dropped the pigs off on the island with the intention of coming back later to enjoy a couple of pork chops, but they never returned. Others believe that the pigs were survivors of a shipwreck and they swam to the safety of the island. The island is home to about 20 pigs and piglets, who are fed by both the locals and tourists. These pigs are one of the most popular tourist attractions in the Bahamas. Some people do believe that they are a threat to the current ecosystem, with the swine needing to compete with the amphibians and reptiles for food, but as food is abundant for the pigs from their human friends, they are not likely to prey on the reptiles. Except for the phenomenon of the swimming pigs, and boy can they move, the island is also home to some stray cats and even a few goats. Number 1. Hippos of Hacienda Napoles, Colombia Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar built a luxurious estate in the country and named it Hacienda Napoles. When he met his end in 1993, many of the original buildings on the property were destroyed or reconditioned for other uses. Also housed on the property was a complete zoo that was home to antelope, elephants, giraffes, ostriches, ponies, and of course, hippos. Sure, everyone keeps a hippo or two as a pet. Although most of the animals were donated to the Colombian and international zoos, some bison and even some zebras are still kept there. African animals in Colombia, because of course, if you are that powerful and rich, why not? And then there are the hippos. Escobar had four hippos on his estate, but when the government took over, they discovered they were too much work to capture and move. Escobar's hippopotamuses escaped and became feral, living in lakes in the area and even spreading out into neighboring rivers and towns. The climate is perfect for them and they have no natural predators. Hippos are very dangerous and can turn into savage beasts in the blink of an eye. Their presence is a massive obstacle for the fishermen in the area trying to earn their bread and butter. There are a bunch of them just walking through town and it's best for you to stay out of their way. It is believed that about 40 hippos still stay at Hacienda Napoles and that at least 30 more roam the nearby area, so watch out! Now, years later, everyone is still trying to figure out what to do with them. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time! Bye!